back to my channel i'm grace on tour and i love to showcase the beautiful world that we live in in this video we will be exploring portugal's second largest town of porto but before we head out there remember to like this video and subscribe there are new travel videos every week and i really appreciate your support but for now let's head out there be wondering why are you in Portugal I'm actually here on a work trip and it is the weekend now so I was very fortunate enough to be able to spend the weekend here uh, before work starts again on Monday so yeah that's why I'm here and we're going to start the day by walking over the Pont de Luis bridge which is behind me it's a two-story metal bridge uh, from 1886 and it's I believe one of the most iconic landmarks of Porto so yeah uh, we're going to be walking over the uh, lower <laughs> uh, deck of the two stories um, and uh, yeah I'll see you on the other side. So I saw this girl on Instagram recommend a place called Kitty's Rock uh, where you get the best views over the Point de Luis bridge <laughs> um, and she said that uh, there are some rocks to climb and I thought oh, okay it's not that you know bad but <laughs> yeah it, it's quite tricky to get here so just note that but it is a truly breathtaking and amazing view over uh, over the city um, so yeah I, I have to say it's a, it's a great spot to uh, get the views in. How come the stars come to shine when it's dark from so far away? Show us where we are. Now we're going to be heading up here to the Mirador. I have now walked up the hill to the monastery of Serra do Pilar. And here you also get an amazing view over the city. and. Uh, this monastery together with the uh, Louise Bridge and the historic center of Porto was in 1996 designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site. What makes the sun go to sleep every night and what's it dreaming of? And as you probably can tell as well it is quite early uh, on a Saturday morning and when I explore a city, I love to wake up early and see the city um, wake up and um, be brought to life. Um, you also get an insight of, you know, the locals and you see all the people, you know, cleaning the streets and the parks. Um, also, you will have a lot of the places for yourself and get the best uh, views and uh, everything all for yourself. So. Yeah, you'll avoid the crowds as well. So uh, that is one of my best tips uh, for exploring a city is to wake up early, explore as much as you can before the crowds start to gather. As you can see as well, the top part of the Point de Lace Bridge is designated only for trams and uh, walking. <laughs> uh, so the only the lower level is for cars. Um, yeah. I wonder. And just opposite the monastery you have the Jardim do Moro uh, which is a great spot for sunset. I have seen in the evenings here a lot of people come here uh, and there's lots of places to sit and in this park and watch the sunset over the city. Uh, so yeah that's a tip for you. Now we're going to be walking uh, on uh, along the uh, riverbank on this side of Porto to the cable car station which opens at 10. How come the sky sometimes hides behind the clouds? Maybe it's just like me. One of the things that uh, Porto is uh, very famous for is, uh, or Portugal is very famous for, is their port wine. And uh, the name port actually comes from Porto. And uh, on this side of the river, you will see lots of uh, wine houses or uh, wineries. 
and you can do uh, tours uh, through the wine cellars and get to learn more about uh, the production of port. Also by the river you will see all of these boats with uh, wine barrows I believe they're called um, and um, the wine or the grapes themselves actually come from the Douro Valley and if you just jump on a boat from here you can actually head to the Douro Valley and there are tours going from here uh, where you can actually visit the uh, vineyards and uh, see where the the grapes are harvested. Uh, personally, I'm not. I do not drink wine, so um, I do not know much about this. But it is something that it's very known for. It is now 10 o'clock, and the cable car has now opened. Uh, a one-way ticket for an adult. It's six euros, and uh, yeah, let's enjoy the ride. Behind. Could it be? Until winter comes, until winter comes, until winter comes. It really makes me wonder. Yeah, it makes me wonder. It really makes me wonder. Oh, I wonder. see in the previous clip we took the funicular uh, down the hill and we've ended up in a place called my coffee porto uh, it's a small little coffee shop with uh, acai bowls uh, lovely like brunch things uh, iced coffees with vegan milks and you have the most amazing view over uh, the river and the city so definitely come here um, and now I have ordered an uh, acai bowl and a iced coffee with almond milk so yeah i'm going to begin to this and uh, enjoy i just wonder it really makes me wonder We've been exploring some beautiful tiled churches and walking the beautiful streets and um, one of the most famous bookstores in the world can be found here in Porto, Livaro Livello and um, yeah I can already see that there is a huge queue to get in um, and <laughs> that's why I'm not going to attempt to try to get in there today um, but just know that uh, yeah uh, you can find it here and it's also where uh, JK Rowling uh, got inspiration for one of the Harry Potter books so if you're a Harry Potter fan that's definitely a place to check out. We're down to the Ribeira Harbour now and uh, bought the uh, 15 euro ticket for the Six Bridges boat tour. Uh, we'll be uh, crossing under the Six Bridges here on the uh, Douro River um, and uh, yeah, we're about to board the boat now. Ella quiere más de lo que vamos a hacer en París Andarre y se olía Baila un poquito más, acércate a mi mamá Que vamos a hacer lo una vez más Ella baila pero no dice nada Su y lo expresaba con perreíto y con dembo Que ha sido la estrella dándole al reggaeton ton ton ya y empieza el flow este la nueva era pero baila we are going to head up the Clérigos Clock Tower uh, in the old historic center of Porto it opens at 9 every day and the ticket costs 6 euros for an adult and uh, yeah this was something that I didn't have time to do yesterday when I was exploring the city so I thought it would be great to start the day with this 
and then we're going to be heading to start the beach day. We have now made it to the top of the Klaigos Tower. I'm a bit out of breath because there were quite a few stairs to get up and um, unfortunately it's quite hazy today so we can't see very very far but still it's a great place to um, get up high and see the city. And if you can see there in the distance you have the Porto Cathedral, that you have the uh, port wine boats and the port wineries here. And yeah, the gondola has not yet started yet, so we can't see it, otherwise it would also pass here. And then if I zoom out again, you have the monastery here where we were yesterday. And yeah, then we can see the old town right here. I think that was a great way to start the morning and what we're going to be doing now is I'm going to just head to the uh, supermarket, pick some uh, picnic lunch and then uh, head back to my room, repack my bag and then we're heading to this train station to take the train to the beach. <laughs> As you can see, nobody here is swimming at all. Um, I don't know if it's, it is that it's too cold or what it is, but we'll see if I can get in. Okay. We have now made it back to the city and uh, we are having some dinner and uh, I wanted to try a really traditional dish from the area and I was able to find a place which has a vegan version of it, which is great. And um, what it is, it's called a francesina, which is a Portuguese sandwich originating from Porto. And it's made with uh, bread and usually then a meat filling. Today I've got tempeh in it and a vegan sausage. It is then uh, over a sheet with uh, melted cheese. We have vegan cheese and then a kind of tomato uh, sauce which is poured over the sandwich. And uh, it's usually served with fries, so we have them here. Francesina translated means little Frenchie. And the history behind it is that uh, Daniel da Silva, return, a returned immigrant from France and Belgium, Belgium tried to adapt the uh, famous French dish of a croque monsieur to the Portuguese taste when he moved to Porto and it uh, dates back to the 1950s so um, yeah I'm really excited to try this and yeah we're going to dig into this now it's quite big actually I wasn't expecting it to be this big so now I've opened it up and as you can see it's two pieces of bread and then you have the filling. Uh, we have a piece of tempeh, we have some mushroom, tomato and then the sauce all over. And of course the rice here. I am now back at the hotel after a lovely dinner and um, I actually brought with me uh, some dessert so I'm going to sit here and um, enjoy the beautiful view here for my last night. Um, yeah, such an, a beautiful view in Porto at night. It's really, really beautiful. Yeah, um, but I just wanted to close off this video and say thank you so much for following along. I hope that you have enjoyed it and um, I have one last adventure to do before um, the big life change will happen um, so I hope that you are staying tuned for that remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time bye